In the last year, Magellan Midstream Partners had 23% returns for shareholders, beating the market. Can they keep this up? We're analyzing Magellan Midstream Partners stock ticker MMP to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Magellan Midstream. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Magellan Midstream for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Magellan Midstream stock performance. Magellan Midstream trades for $54.98 per share. In the last year, their stock price is up 15.5%. The company has paid a whopping 7.5% dividend yield. These combined returns are much higher than the S&P 500. In the last five years, however, Magellan Midstream is down 21%. In the last 10 years, their stock price is up 5%. Going back prior to the global financial crisis, Magellan Midstream has returned quite a bit to shareholders. Over the last 18 years, the company has compounded its stock at just over 7% annually, and Magellan Midstream has paid a lot of dividends. Their average dividend yield throughout this time is in addition to these returns in their stock price. Magellan Midstream trades $5 below their 52-week high. They're up $10 from their 52-week low. A little under 4% of their shares are sold short. Magellan Midstream is a large business. They have an $11 billion market cap. But what else do you need to know about the business? Magellan Midstream Partners is a master limited partnership that operates pipelines and storage terminals in the central and eastern United States. Its assets transport, store, and distribute refined petroleum products and crude and earn a fee-based stream of cash flows. Assets include the country's longest petroleum pipeline network and several crude oil pipelines. Refined products make up about 70% of operating margin, with the remainder being mainly crude oil pipelines. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock's likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. These business returns will be captured here by return on capital. The average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this allows us to build in some margin of safety for the business. Magellan Midstream has earned returns on capital in the low to mid-teens in most of these years. Average out Magellan Midstream earns about 13.3% returns on capital in a given year. While that's solidly above average, that's just very slightly down from the benchmark we'd be looking for. Even though this is close, this is an X on metric number one. <laughs> Metric number two, we're looking for growth in the business. We want to see five-year revenue and free cash flow growth for Magellan. Their last 12 months worth of numbers are included in these calculations here. During this time, Magellan Midstream has increased their revenues by 20%. This is growth for both of these, and this is our first check of the day coming in on metric number two. In metric number three, we get to see where Magellan Midstream really shines. We're looking for decreasing shares outstanding in the last five years. In contrast to many other master limited partnerships, Magellan Midstream has repurchased shares throughout this time. They've actually bought back 9% of their shares outstanding. This is great as a shareholder in the business because when a company buys back stock by repurchasing their shares, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which will increase the percentage of the company's profits that you're entitled to without you having to spend a dime. It's almost like the company's making a partial acquisition of itself. Just like any acquisition, we want the business to be getting more value than the price they're paying. This depends on a couple of factors, including the company's price and what a potential fair price for Magellan Midstream is, which we'll be calculating later on in our video, so stay tuned. Metric number four puts our previous metrics together. We're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years for Magellan. As the company has both bought back their shares and they've grown their free cash flows, this led to modest free cash flow per share growth. This is a check on metric number four. Recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one very close X for Magellan Midstream. Midstream businesses tend to use a lot of debt, but during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want Magellan Midstream's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow the business has produced in their last five years. Currently, Magellan Midstream has $5.1 billion in net debt. They've added on to this throughout this time, and the company's produced $3.9 billion worth of free cash flow in their last five years. Historically, it doesn't look like 
like these free cash flows are able to support their debt position. This is an Exxon metric number five. For the higher leverage that was mentioned, this may or may not be an issue for the company. Also, in their last 12 months, Magellan Midstream has produced $1.2 billion worth of free cash flow. When that's extrapolated out over the company's next five years, Magellan Midstream would comfortably be able to support their debt loads with their free cash flows. That's an if, and that's something you'd want to research in more depth. Through our first five metrics, we have three checks and two X's for the business. Before we get to metric number six, let's not forget about our bonus. As our bonus, we're looking at Magellan Midstream's dividend profile. Right now, Magellan pays a 7.5% dividend yield. This is huge compared to the yield of an S&P 500 ETF. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. It's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a company to see if their dividends are supported. Magellan Midstream has both grown their dividends and their free cash flows throughout this time. However, the company looks like it's only been able to support their dividend payouts using their cash flows in their two most recent fiscal years. They have a pretty high dividend payout ratio still. The company was pretty far off in a couple of these years in 2019 and 2020 from fully supporting their dividends. While their dividends look like they're supported currently and the business has continued to grow their free cash flows, this is something you'd want to pay close attention to. Our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this provides a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Magellan Midstream. Magellan Midstream right now has a $16 billion total enterprise value. This is taking into account both their net debt position and their market cap, giving a perspective of Magellan Midstream similar to it being a private company. The business has produced 3.9 billion dollars worth of free cash flow in their last five years meaning they produce about 750 million dollars in an average year when that's divided by their 16 billion dollar total enterprise value that gives about a 4.9 percent average free cash flow to enterprise value yield Magellan Midstream in their last 12 months has produced $1.2 billion worth of free cash flow. When that's divided by their $16 billion total enterprise value, we get about a 7.5% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. These two numbers are split on either side of that risk premium we'd be seeking. Because we want to see this historically, this is an Exxon metric number six. However, don't throw this business out. It looks pretty interesting based off of that current cash flow number. So we're going to have to dig deeper. To get a more concrete price estimate from Magellan Midstream, we're performing a discounted cash flow analysis. A DCF analysis is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. As our inputs, we're starting with an average of Magellan Midstream's three-year free cash flows, then using historical assumptions to grow these into the future, assuming the company grows these at 3% annually for the next 10 years, then they grow their cash flows at 1% annually in the 10 years from there. You have to figure out if these are accurate for the business in the future or not. Adding in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of their net worth. If we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett's looking for in addition to his margin of safety requirements, from today's valuations of Magellan Midstream, an estimate of their fair intrinsic value is around $42 per share. There are big factors to keep in mind. This 15% discount rate would be including Magellan Midstream's large dividend yield. Half of these estimated returns to shareholders would be coming from Magellan's dividends. Also, the company has had a low degree of business predictability in its past. This is partially due to the extreme fluctuations seen in the price of oil within the last 10 years. This commodity pricing and how that relates to Magellan Midstream's cash flows are something to be mindful of. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give Magellan our final rating, but we have to address something first. We focused a lot on the numbers, but what are the qualitative aspects of the business? Starting with the qualitative factors supporting a potential long thesis, number one, Magellan only undertakes profitable butane blending opportunities when spreads warranted, meaning this is a potentially low risk endeavor. Number two, Magellan supplies more than 40% of the refined products to seven of the 15 states it serves. Number three, Magellan has been highly discerning with regard to capital allocation and invested in a number of attractive projects at excellent prices. Then the key points supporting a potential short thesis, 
this. Number one, Magellan's crude oil and storage assets are not as high a quality business as the core refined product business. Number two, the emergence of refinery master limited partnerships has limited Magellan's opportunities to invest more in its refined product network. Number three, gasoline demand could pressure volumes on Magellan's system, which generates the bulk of the partnership's earnings. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative aspects for Magellan Midstream. Now it's time to give our rating. In analyzing Magellan Midstream Partners stock ticker MMP, we learned the company earns above average returns on capital, coming in just shy of the benchmark we're looking for. Magellan has strongly grown their cash flows and their revenues, and they bought back 9% of their shares in the last five years. While their historical free cash flows don't look like they support their current net debt position, on a current bait, their current free cash flows look like they'd be able to. Then their current and their average free cash flows were split on either side of the risk premium we'd be seeking, when comparing those enterprise value yields to the yield of the 10-year treasury. Magellan Midstream has also grown their dividend payouts to shareholders. Their free cash flows have grown slightly faster than this, and Magellan has supported their dividends with their free cash flows in their two most recent fiscal years, but were unable to support that previously. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. Performing our discounted cash flow analysis, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, seeking a 15% rate of return at today's valuations of Magellan Midstream, an estimate of their fair intrinsic stock price is around $42 per share. The business was last at those levels in February of 2021. Combining all the factors of our analysis together, Magellan Midstreams looks like a very strong candidate for further research. They were very close on a number of our metrics, and the business seemingly improved by quite a lot in recent years. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, comment down below what business you want me to look at next time. Thanks for learning about Magellan Midstream with me, and have a great day.